today's topic is, write this down, enemy of the state. Enemy of the state. Today's class is going to help a lot of us out. Some of us going to get mad. Some of us going to be glad. It's going to be all right. We're going to get through it. Recently, within the past year or so, the state has accused some of our people of crimes. I'm going to show y'all prophecy, and I'm going to show y'all a way to avoid getting hemmed up in today's system. Believe it or not, I'm going to help you in the spirit. Some of you will listen, and you're going to be safe and secure. Some of you will reject what I'm showing you in the scriptures. We'll get a call that you have been arrested or deported. I want to open up with Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13. Come on. The book of Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. The burden of Babylon. Give me uh, Hosea 12 and 10. Let me show you something. Some of you know, some of you don't know. Hosea 12 and 10. Many times we read the Bible. We'll read about Babylon and our thought goes to Christian commentaries. Read that. The book of Hosea, chapter 12 and verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and use similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. You see that? God uses similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. Uh, from there, give me the book of Job. The book of Job, chapter 11, and verse 6. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. That's what we all want to know. The secrets of wisdom. God's wisdom. Go ahead. That they are double to that which is. That they are double to that which is written that's what that means that they are double many of the scriptures we read have dual double meanings and this is what christians have not figured out yet but we know go ahead know therefore that god exacted of the less than thine iniquity deserve so what we're going through in this captivity is really less than we deserve let's go back to isaiah 13 and one again the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, and verse 1. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. So this Babylon, as we read down, is not talking about ancient Babylon. This has a dual meaning, a double meaning, is really making reference to the United States of America. Let me show you another understanding on Babylon, just to prove my point, and to further prove what we just read in Job 11, verse 6. Go to Zechariah. Chapter 2, verse 6 and 7. The book of Zechariah, chapter 2 and verse 6. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. Ho, ho, come forth and flee from the land of the north. I'm going to show you that this is North America. Go ahead. Saith the Lord, for I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Come on. Verse 7. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. So it says that Zion would dwell with the daughter of Babylon. Now get Psalms 137. Remember, the daughter of Babylon is in the land of the north. We just read that. Zechariah 2, 6 and 7 just said, deliver yourself from the land of the north. It tells you the land of the north is the daughter of Babylon. Now Psalms 137, 7 and 8, please. The book of Psalm, chapter 137, verse 7. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. The children of Edom is the subject that David is addressing right here. Go ahead. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. The word raise it, R-A-S-E, means destroy. R-A-S-E means destroy. That is not the same word as R-A-I-S-E, which means to build up or lift up. Two different words. Read. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. See what he calls um, Edom? The daughter of Babylon. Edom is the daughter of Babylon. We just read in Zechariah 2 and 6, the daughter of Babylon is where, brothers? In the north. 
in the north. That's North America. And it tells you that Zion, meaning the Israelites, would dwell with them. That is North America. Let's go back to Isaiah 13. Thank you. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 2. Lift thee up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. So now, lift thee up a banner. What is this banner talking about? Write this down. The Bible. Give me Isaiah 62 and 10. The banner is the book you all hold in your hands. The book that's in every courthouse. The book that's in every church. The books that's in most of these hotels. <laughs> Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 62 and verse 8. Mm -mm. 10. Verse 10. Go through, go through the gates. Prepare ye the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway. Gather out the stones. Lift up, lift up a standard for the people. Right. You see that? Lift up a standard for the people. The standard and the banner is talking about the same thing. It's referring to the scriptures. From there, give me Jeremiah 51, 12. You're not going to find the word Bible written in there. If in case, why doesn't it say Bible? It's not, that word's not there yet. Bible just is uh, Latin, which means collection of writings. Okay, read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51 and verse 12. Set up the standard. Set up the standard. Again, the Bible. Go ahead. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Mm -hmm. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchman. When it says make the watch strong, set up the watchman. That's you teachers. This is why we have things like Camp 101. This is why we tell you, brothers, to study, to show yourself approved, like the scriptures teach us to do. This is why we say prayer and application of the scriptures will build you. Read that again. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. For the Lord hath both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. Everything the Lord has spoken against the inhabitants of Babylon is being prophesied by the watchmen, and it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Go back to Isaiah 13, please. Verse 2 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13 and verse 2. Lift thee up a banner upon the high mountain. The high mountain is the United States of America. That's the highest government on the planet right now. When it says high, it means great. Okay, like we read in Revelation about Babylon, the great this is the highest mountain. This is the greatest kingdom on the planet right now. Read. Exalt the voice unto them. Exalt the voice unto them. Hold this. Give me uh, Proverbs 120. Exalt the voice. Exalt the voice. I want all your, you at home who is watching online. This is not talking about Facebook teaching. I want you all to understand that. When it's telling you exalt your voice, that's not through a computer. You typing. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, and verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the street. Does it say on the computer? In the streets. So it's telling you the, the wisdom of God is being taught and preached in the streets. Go ahead. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. She crieth in the chief places of concourse. All I want is down to 21. In the openings of the gates, in the city she uttereth her words, saying, from there, give me Luke 14, 23. So when the Bible tells us in Isaiah 13, exalt the voice unto them, it means just that. It's your voice. It's not you typing. Read that. The book of Luke, chapter 14, and verse 23. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and hedges. Go out into the highways and the hedges. That means the streets. Go ahead. And compel them. And compel them. That's when you're shaking the, exalting the voice and shaking the hand. You're compelling what? Come on, man. And compel them to come in. And compel them to come into this truth. That's what Christ was saying. When are you doing that? On the streets, in the highways and hedges. Not typing. I keep stressing that because everybody's a, a professional typist now. Everyone's a prophet. A dude called in uh, one of the radio shows. He said, uh, he says, Shalom, brother. You got a uh, statement or question? He goes, I am a prophet. Shalom. I said, You're not a prophet. 
Just the way you just said, I know you're not a prophet. Stop. I am a prophet. Give me a, I'm sorry. Give me Second Chronicles 17. The book of Second Chronicles chapter 17, verse 7. Also in the third year of his reign, he sent to his princes, even to ben and to Obadiah, and to Zechariah, and to Nethanel, and to Micahiah, to teach in the cities of Judah. You see that? To teach in the cities of Judah. Read on. And with them he sent Levites, even Shemaiah, and Nethaniah, and Zebediah, and Asahel, and Shemariah Shemari- Moth, and Jehonathan, and Adonijah, and Tobijah, and Tob Adonijah, Levites, and with them Elishama and Jehoram priests. Read. And they taught in Judah, and had the book of the law of the Lord with them, and with and went about throughout all the cities of Judah and taught the people. So what we're doing is no different than what our forefathers did in the book of Chronicles. It's no different than Christ instructed in the book of Matthew. We have always been instructed to go into the streets and teach. So beware of these people who sit at home and type, type, type. Beware of them. Okay, listen good to it. And you got some of them do YouTube videos. They will never go into the streets to teach a word. But they know so much. Beware of them. Those are not the servants of the Most High. Go back to Isaiah 13. And verse 2 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13, and verse 2. Lift thee up the banner upon the high mountain. Lift thee up a banner upon the high mountain. Go ahead. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand. When it says shake the hand, that means you're correcting someone. You're admonishing someone. Get Isaiah 58 and 1. Here's a precept for that shaking the hand. The book of Isaiah, chapter 58 and verse 1. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. You see that part that says spare not? That's you shaking the hand. That's you reproving the people, correcting the people of their transgressions. Read that verse again. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. See what God says to do. He commands us to show our people their transgressions. Okay. That's the commandment. So when we go back to Isaiah 13, it's going to tell you what's going to happen as a result of us admonishing, correcting the people. Back to Isaiah 13 too. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 2. Lift thee up a banner upon the high mountain. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. You see that bottom part? That they may go into the gates of the nobles. Meaning people are going to get so pissed off. They're going to go to the nobles against you, against us. And I'm going to prove that point right there. Give me, um, go to the Apocrypha, the book of Esther. Esther chapter 13, 3 to 6. The book of Esther in the Apocrypha, chapter 13, verse 3. Now, when I ask my counselors how this might be brought to pass, Amen, that excelled in wisdom among us. That and- Amen there is Haman that you read about in the Bible. Haman, the Edomite, the Amalekite. Glad he hated us. Read. That excelled in wisdom among us. And was approved for his constant goodwill and steadfast fidelity. And had the honor of second place in the kingdom. Declared unto us that in all nations throughout the world, there was scattered a certain malicious people. Hear what he's, now remember, Haman's speaking to the king of Persia. He says, scattered amongst the people is a certain malicious people. Go ahead. That had laws. That have laws. Go ahead. Contrary. To all nations. Contrary to all nations. That Bible that we all have in our hand, the laws in this book is contrary to all nations on earth. And this is why you have to know what's going to happen as we preach and prophesy the words of this book. People are going to get angry. Read. And continually despise the commandments of kings. You see that? And these people's laws despise the commandments of kings. They don't want to do what the kings say. Go ahead. So as the uniting of our kingdom. So that the uniting of our kingdoms, meaning Greece and Persia. 
honorably intended by us cannot go forward. Okay, what verse was that? That was verse 4. Go ahead. Seeing then, we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. You see that? Seeing then, that, seeing then we understand that this people alone is continually in opposition unto all men. Go ahead. Deferring in the strange manner of their laws. Because of their strange laws. Go ahead. And evil affected to our state. Read. Working, in, working all the mischief they can. That our kingdom may not be firmly established. You see that? So as a result of Mordecai, he was so angry at Mordecai the Jew, who was of the tribe of Benjamin. He went to the king to inflame the king against the, to kill all the Israelites. He slandered us. What we're reading is what's happening today. Okay? It's the same thing. From there, give me um, John eleven forty three to 48. And it's not just the other nations. I'm going to show amongst our own people. The book of John, chapter 11, verse 43. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. This is when Christ resurrected Lazarus from the dead. Go ahead. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, loose him. And let him go. Now you would think people would rejoice over this thing. Go ahead. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary had, had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. So many believed on Christ. Go ahead. But some of them, but went, some of them which saw the miracle, go ahead, went their ways to the Pharisees. You see that? Go ahead. And told them what things Jesus had done. So although you had certain Israelites see the miracle Christ did, they didn't rejoice. They ran to the Pharisees who they knew hated Christ. Let me, let me tell you what he, what he did not now. Let me tell you. So you had certain Israelites which despised the workings of God. Read. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. They, were, they wanted to keep their positions under Rome. That's what they wanted to do. They were afraid of losing their seats of authority under Rome. So when you read on, what they do? They answer to the Romans. Just like we read in Esther. Just like Haman gave a grievous report about the Israelites, the Pharisees did the same thing against the followers of Christ. From there, Acts 17 and 4. We're going to read 4 through 8. The book of Acts, chapter 17 and verse 4. And some of them believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a, a great multitude and of the chief women, not a few. So those devout Greeks were Israelites that were raised up in Greek customs. They believed and wanted to change their lives. Read. But the Jews, which believe not, but the Jews, which believe not, these are the ones that was raised in the law of Moses. They believe not that Christ was Messiah. Go ahead. Moved with envy. See that word moved with envy. Go ahead. Took unto them certain lewd fellows of the baser sort. They look for the lowest Israelites they could find those grimy Negroes who'll do anything for a dollar. That's what they was looking for. Go ahead. And gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar. You see what they did? They got these dudes of a base sort of men, drug dealers, criminals, who'll do anything for a dollar, and got them to get the city in an uproar against Paul and the disciples. Go ahead. And assaulted the house of Jason. See what they did? They assaulted. See, that, assault, that means they got physical with them. Go ahead. They assaulted the house of Jason. Go ahead. And sought to bring them out to the people. Uh -huh. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city. See that? They took them to the rulers of the city. Go ahead. Crying. These are the nobles. Go ahead. These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. See that? The teaching of Christ turned the world upside down. Y'all believe it or not? This gospel, as we're teaching it, is turning the world upside down. Go ahead. Whom Jason hath received, and all that... And all do and contrary. these all and these all and these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar. Here we go again. Didn't Haman say the same thing? They said, and they go against Caesar. 
That's what they're act. And when you read it, they did not go against Caesar, just like Mordecai and them did not go against the Persian king. But the lie went out there mm-hmm. to stir the people against us. Read, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. Go ahead. And they troubled the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. You see that? So now, let's go right back to Isaiah 13. With, and let's read the prophecy. Right, with new eyes. Thank you. The book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 2. Lift thee up a banner upon the high mountain. Uh-huh. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. See that? That they may go into the gates of the nobles. That's what we're living right now. People are getting frustrated, hating the commandments of the one true God. And they're going to the gates of the nobles. Hey, these guys ain't right. They're this, they're that. They're looking for anything to get us on. This is what the class is about, enemy of the state. We got to have, what's that expression? Dot your I's and cross your T's. Is that how it go? Yeah. Whatever, what he said. Yes, that thing. Did you put it up there? I want to show you all this article. I'm going to show you we living in prophecy. Go to the uh, that group me part and put the article up. I'm going to show you something. There's a there's an Edomite group, and they got black people in the front called the Southern Poverty Law Center. I'm going to show you how wicked, how evil these people are. And it's a fulfilling of what we're, we've just read in the Bible. Trump electrifies radical right hate groups. March 14th. That was this past week. We're going to read down. I'm going to read the first paragraph, then I'm going to jump to the fourth. The number of hate groups in the United States rose for a second year in a row in 2016, as the radical right was energized by the candidacy of Donald Trump, according to a report released by the Southern Poverty Law Centers, SPLC, annual centers of hate groups and other extremist group organizations. Jump down the fourth paragraph. Look at this. At the top right there. Among the black separatists, Neo-Nazis and white supremacist groups operating in the Garden State, that's New Jersey. You got Nation of Islam, Forza Nuova, I don't even know who that is. National Socialist Movement, Militant Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, Confederate White Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, and Israel United in Christ. Do you see what they did? Now, I want y'all to look at these, these Ku Klux Klan the National Socialist Movement, the Confederate White Knights, these people have burned crosses, lynched people, ran people out of their homes, dragged people behind cars. We have not done anything like that. But look how they put us. All that is to get the people in the world against us. Okay? We have not... Who have we lynched? Have we lynched anybody recently? Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> recently. Not, not at all. At all. Okay. <laughs> but and before and, and listen, good. They don't say uh, black separatist groups anymore. Now they point us out by name, and I'm going to tell you why. A friend of mine who I won't name, but I told the deacons and I told some of the ca- I told the captains, and I believe I told them in Oklahoma as well. He does security for some of these so-called Jewish organizations. In the organization, they were talking about the Israelites, how they're against them, the so-called Jews. And then all of a sudden, and people say, yeah, hey, Greg, one guy, one so-called white man, Jewish guy, jumps up and says, what about that group in purple and gold? Another guy on the other side said, well, they're not a hate group. And then some of them said, no, they are. They're all the same. They're all the same. So some of them said, no, they're not the same. These guys are about family. Uh, they, they have wives, children, jobs. They're not like the, those guys. They ain't out there threatening people to kill them. And they were, no, 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 no. Those are the ones we have to look at. He, they said the fact that they're more organized makes them more dangerous than the rest. That's what they said in their meeting. So when he gave me the call, he said, yo, I'm telling you what's going on. So I wasn't shocked when I saw the article. Some of y'all be shocked. I'm not shocked. So when I read the scriptures, I see what's going to happen. So you got this campaign of good, y'all. So what are you going to yeah. say? So this right here is reminiscent of something that happened not too long ago with that Peter Moses situation. They right. did the same thing there. They had a bunch of foolishness on the screen. And what they do? They threw IUIC in the middle of it as well, exactly. which was like apples and oranges. What the hell they throw us in there for? And he was affiliated with another group. Right. So they did the same thing. And the name of that video was called Be Not Afraid because we know that a lot of our people are going to look at stuff like this and become wishy-washy and messed up in the mind, not understanding what's really going down. 
Right. And also, you don't see in that list copy and paste profits on YouTube. That's what I call right. them. Copy and paste profits on YouTube. They're not a threat. That's why the brother in that um, new Christian movement, Apologetics, he said that those guys have a strong sense of organization. They're all linked together. All these groups are all linked together to, to deem us as a threat to society because the Bible makes us that. The Bible, the laws of God make us outlaws. The, once again, the laws of God make us outlaws of this world. We are a world outside this world. You'll be prepared for that. Go to Matthew 24. Verse 9 and 10. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, mm -hmm. and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. How many nations, brothers? All. It says all. All nations. That's why Haman was telling the Persian king, he said, they have lost contrary to all nations. Christ said, you're going to be hated of all nations. Why? For his name's sake. Christ's name's sake means the Bible. For the Bible's sake. Read. And then shall many be offended. Many of you going to be offended. Some of you sisters going to be offended. Offended at what? Because when a white man comes down, like I told y'all before, remember what they did during the Marcus Garvey campaign. When J. Edgar Hoover um, found out regarding it's the UNIA, is it called, his group, Garvey's group? They said, listen, the way we get put fear in them, start to fire them off their jobs for even being associated with Marcus Garvey. That's going to happen again. That's why we tell you, brothers, make sure your speech is according to scriptures. That way, when we, when we have to go to court, you're not saying things outside of the Bible because you got an attitude. You understand what I'm saying? If Keep our words biblical, scriptural. Okay? Yeah. For example, recently, let me go over it. Let's let me know. There's a group on YouTube that went out their way to do a video about how the 12 tribes chart is off. It's whited out. Now they're saying they're long, no longer calling themselves black Hebrew Israelites anymore. Now what they're going to call themselves Ebre, what is it, Eber and Hebrew, whatever. Right. Because they, they, they said there were Edomites hanging outside their door with weapons, drawn whatever, or evil eyes. So now the whole family who went out their way to defame the brothers who go out and jeopardize their lives in the street, now they're, turning it, now they're, they're denouncing the term a black Israel, an Israelite. They're denouncing it all together, saying we're not that. That's that's not the, we called ourselves in the past. We were called e Hebrews. So it's all fear, and that and that fear is is going to spread through a lot of Israelites who are who are fearful, who hide behind keyboards, hide behind social media, and don't go out in the street. That's 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 the that's the um, the result. Read that again, verse ten. And then shall many be offended. Mm -hmm. And shall betray one another. Some of y'all are going to betray one another. I'm going to give an example. There was a sister among us. Demon. A black devil. Walked up out of here so offended at the law of adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Call, had called my job. Told my boss that I have the whole congregation following her. Taking pictures of her. Putting her in fear. My boss called me in the office. He says... He said, I recorded her. He said, listen, I ain't even going to call her name the black devil that she is. Mm. Played the tape, and I'm sitting there like, I started laughing. I said, <laughs> he said, uh, I know you know, but I said, boss, listen, that's a lie. That is 100% untruth. That is a lie. And I said, this woman was thrown out for adultery. Having sex with her, her, with her husband's friend mm. or a dude that some holy nigga she met. In the house, with the kids, in the house. Y'all know who I'm talking about. For three days, you captains know who I'm talking about, the hoe that she is. So because the law offended her, now she's like, I'm going to get him fired. I'm going to destroy him. I'm going to destroy IUIC. That's exactly. what the whole point was. And that's what you brothers going to find out. You, you sister going to find out. Here's another case. Sister leaves the truth. Got the call day before yesterday in Florida. Her husband and her, she said, I don't believe that Bible. Uh, um, I'm not doing nothing that Bible says. These are my words now. And my, my, the way I translate what she's saying is, I love white man, and I'm going to shake my butt. My mama gave it to me, and I'm wearing these pants, and I'm going to do what I want to do. F you. So now they got the divorce. So what they hope is when, you get the, when, you, when she leaves you, your life falls apart. She sees your life is doing good. Hmm, he's doing all right. Look, he got another woman there. Damn. Now she's more mad. New music. New music. So she's mad now. So what is she now? He's paying, he's, the brother's paying child support for the kids they got. 
They got joint custody. He's paying child support. She goes, I'm going to call your job and tell them you're part of a hate group. So I said, you know what? I said, let me show how this is why God calls some of our women ostriches. You know what an ostrich does? They put their head in the ground and they'll crush the eggs and not realize where the babies are. Mm-hmm. This man is paying child support. Let's say it's about $1,000 a month or two, whatever it is. She going to get him fired. How is she going to provide for them kids now? This is a Negro, dumb, black woman who don't have a thought on crack. They're crazy. Then after the whole life is destroyed, she'll sit back. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. You stupid idiot. And the beautiful thing, the beautiful ending would be the new rod that she jumped on, just leave her. Said, so, well, I ain't taking care of that. It, you, that's what's going to happen. You, you had that figured out. You wouldn't mess that up. Now you want to bring it on me? Goodbye. That's exactly what's going to happen. So reverse 10 again. And these are not isolated cases. We tell some of you brothers, leave that hole alone, but keep a friendly, uh, what's the word? A civil relationship with them. Because they're evil and dumb. I want to do some, I want to drop an F-bomb, but I can't do that. Don't do that. Read verse 10. Matthew 24, verse 10. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. So that's what we're, this happened during the time of the apostles. Is happening again today. From there, from there. Go to Revelation 12, please. I'm going to show you a similitude. A similitude. Remember, the subject matter is enemy of the state. When you decide that you want to follow the commandments of God, you are an enemy of the state. And I'm going to show you that in detail. But I'm just taking you through some steps. Give me that Revelation 12, 1 through 4. The book now, of we've Re- gone through this chapter many times, so I'm, going, I'm not going to go through a bunch of precepts. I'm just going to say what it is. Stay with me. Write it down. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in, he- in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. So this woman represents the nation of Israel. That's why it stipulates the crown of 12 stars. When it says clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, remember, the moon and the sun represent light. When you read Proverbs 6, 23, it says the law is light. Everybody with me so far? Proving that the woman, which is Israel, was given God's laws. Read on. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth. And pain to be delivered. The child that was about to come is what we call Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns. The great red dragon is the great red nation called Edom. The great red dragon is the great red nation called Edom. When you read Genesis 25, 25, when it says the first came out, Red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. The seven heads, okay, are the seven great nations. Who can name them for me? Quickly, quickly. Who can name the seven heads? The seven heads. Stand up. Come on. Shalom. Shalom. What's Brother your name? Masha. Brother Masha. Brother what? Masha. Masha. Uh, it's Greece, uh-huh. Rome, Spain, uh, France, uh, Germany. Russia and Great Britain. Very good. Very good. Those are the seven. When it says the ten horns, it's referring to NATO, the ten common markets. Read on. Having seven heads and ten horns mm-hmm. and seven crowns upon his heads, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. That's when Rome came down on the um, tribes of Israel that were in uh, Israel. You had Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and the remnant of the other tribes. Go ahead. And did cast them to the earth. Uh huh. Cast us to the earth, captivity, God. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Who knows the precept for that when it says the great red dragon stood before the woman to kill her child as soon as it was born? Yes, right here, the brother with the pen in his hand. Matthew 2 Who are you? Ah, uh, Isaiah. See. Isaiah. So yes, where are we going? Matthew 2, 13. Very good. Read that for me, Ezekiel, real quick. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 13. Because I know some of you are new, and you want to know why 
the Bible in a similar to is calling the white man a great red dragon that stood to kill the baby. Here's the proof right here. Matthew 2 verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Herod was a Roman and I do mean Edomite. Okay. Herod was an Edomite, a row of Rome. All of Rome was Esau. So it says they wanted to kill Christ. So let's go back to revelation 12, jump down to verse nine. I'm just, I'm giving some key points. Revelation chapter 12, verse nine. And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So you see what the Bible's calling Rome, calling Esau, calling Edom, the devil. Some of you think we use these terms just because we have an attitude problem. Believe it or not, most brothers in here may have pretty good relationships with Esau, but we know the difference between what's out there and what the most high says. Some of you don't know, you can blur the lines, I'm confused. How, how can you go to work and have these Edomites, you're all friendly? You got to know how to balance things in this world, okay? Right, acquaintances, thank you. Just because we go, to, we go to work with them, they may be in school with some of our kids. They know the difference, okay? The Bible calls them Edomites. They are the wicked, okay? It don't matter if you smile at them, whatever, but you better have that understanding in your head. You don't think our forefathers during the time of chattel slavery knew that? We mean, yeah, that's the boss. Yeah, that's the boss. He's the devil the Bible speaks of. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. You better do the same thing now. Okay. So, read that again. And the great red and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. So it lets you know that this great red dragon is the one that deceives the whole world with their politics, with their religions, with all these. They're the creators of these things that deceives everybody. Jump down from nine. Go from nine. Where do I want to go? I wrote, right down to 15. 15. Watch this. Verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. This water that comes out of this dragon's mouth to carry us away. Give me that precept in Ephesians real quick. You know what I want? 414 or 413, one of those two. It says, be not carried away of every, something like that. 414 is it? Look at it. Yep. The book of Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. You see that? Carried about with every wind of doctrine. Was that it? No, it was more. Uh -huh. By the slight of men. By the slight of men. You and know what that goes in the slight of men? Anytime something pops up on the Discovery Channel, it's any lie, some of you believe it. You look at CNN, finding Jesus, and they go, oh. Jesus was white. Look what CNN said. You know CNN stand for the Caucasian News Network. They ain't going to bring nothing black in nothing. They don't use scripture in finding Jesus at all. They show you a relic. A relic of a, what's that shroud of a garbage? Right. Uh, the, the shroud, shroud of, of Turin. His face is the size of this uh, frame back here. I'm like, that's a false thing. And you see straight hair on the side with a beard. Number one, the Bible says his beard was ripped off his face. Number two, it said he had a woolly hair. Why does the picture right. look like Caesar Borgia? Look like Caesar Borgia. And you ain't figured that out yet. That's what it means by being carried away with the slight of men, wherein they lie in wait to deceive. Was that the rest of the verse? There's more. Go ahead. And cunning craftiness. Cunning craftiness. Go ahead. Whereby they lie in wait to deceive. They wait to deceive our people. That's their job, to deceive the whole world. That verse right there, that part of the verse there explained, because a lot of y'all probably sitting up here don't understand what the word meant, slight, by the slight of men. If I was to ask some people, could y'all tell me what that word mean? Come on, y'all. Yeah. Who knows what the word mean? I'm going to be quick. Come on. I know the bishop got a lot going on, so I ain't going to be talking much. Shalom. Right. It means to deceive. Right. It means to deceive the slight of men, the trickery of men. Read the verse again and give it back to the bishop, the whole thing. Listen. 
Ephesians 4, 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. So the objective is not to be carried away with the lies. Go ahead. With every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. By the cunning and the trickery of men. That's the reason why the rest of the verse explains it a different way. Read. And cunning craftiness. And cunning craftiness explains what the slight is. Go ahead. Whereby they lie in wait. Where to they lie and wait. Meaning they plot and plan to feed you something stupid to cause you to fall asleep. Go ahead. That's it? That's it. Okay. Bishop. Go back to Revelation 12. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. So that's their job to deceive everyone. And the ones they mainly want to deceive are you, the Israelites. Go ahead. And the earth helped the woman. When it says the earth helped the woman, it's referring to the Bible. Give me that precept in Psalms 85. Might be verse 12, I think. 10. Psalms 85. Thank the book you. of Psalms, chapter 85 and verse 11. Truth shall spring out of the earth. Truth shall spring out of the earth. Go back to uh, Revelation now. So when it says earth helped the woman, the earth helped the woman is referring to the truth. It's not referring to archaeology on its own. The reason you know it's not talking about archaeology, the white man has just put out a law, a, a national law of same-sex marriage, right or wrong. What is archaeology going to do to combat that? Nothing. You have to use the truth of God, the Bible, to say no. Man shall not lay down with mankind as with womankind. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. So the truth here, when it says, and the earth helped the woman, it's referring to the Bible, the scriptures. That's going to spring up. Watch what it says. Read verse 16 again. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth. Meaning the Bible is opened. Go ahead. And swallowed up the flood. And swallowed up the lies. Go ahead. Which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Right. So only the Bible can swallow the lies. Eat up every lie, destroy every lie. Archaeology can't do but so much. Archaeology can just show you that we rule during the dark ages. That's it. That's all it does. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Read on. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. And it's telling you the devil, the white man was wroth with the Israelites. Go ahead. And went to make war. With the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus you Christ. See that? That's the problem. You have, you have, what did I call them? Those internet Israelites, those Facebook Israelites, those YouTube Israelites that stay at home and do these videos, copy and paste prophets. And they, they're so afraid now, like Deacon I thumb brought out, they say, we're not going to call ourselves Israelites no more. <laughs> because, listen, because you have these, these stupid Israelites on the street, and they're saying these stupid things, so we're not going to call ourselves that. Well, we're going to call ourselves the, uh, no, what did it say? Eber. The Eber people, Ebri people. That's all fear and stupidity. Did it say the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the women of the sea, which called themselves Ebri? Did it say that? It said, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That is the problem. That has always been the problem. Isaiah 59. These internet prophets, the, the, de the devil's going to come after us. But watch what it says here. What verse? Verse 19. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59, verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord mm -hmm. from the west. The and West, if y'all didn't know, this is the Western Hemisphere right here. We in. Thank you. Go ahead. And his glory from the rising of the sun. Uh -huh. When the enemy shall come in like a flood. When the enemy comes against us like a flood. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The Most High is only going to allow them to do but so much against the elect of Israel. Everybody understand that? Yes, so what you're afraid for? Stop being afraid. Don't run. Don't run. Don't be offended. Okay. Now, let me tell you about these internet Israelites. Give me Genesis 15. This is, what, this is the new thing. Me and Deacon Yahweh Sop have warned y'all, I believe, uh, and the deacons in general and the captains. When we was in the school, they had a doctrine called the Year 2000 Doctrine. Y'all heard of that? Where they told us, don't worry about nothing. Christ is coming back the year 2000. My wife was there. You could quit your jobs, drop out of school. Don't worry about nothing. 
Christ is coming back in a few years. That didn't happen. It didn't happen. Everybody, all them people got offended. A lot of them went back into the world. Well, guess what's happening now? There's a new doctrine from these internet Israelites that are on Facebook and YouTube. Read Genesis 15, 13. The book of Genesis, chapter 15, verse 13. I'm going to show you it's the same year 2000 doctrine, right? And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them 400 years. You see that? Go ahead. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. So now the new doctrine is, we're only going to be in America for 400 years. So from, they got, a, they got a map on, go on Facebook, from 1619 to 2019, it's 400 years. So they said, Christ is coming back. No, they don't say Christ. They say, Yeshua HaMashiach is coming back in the year 2019. That is the same year 2000 yep. madness. Give me Mark. Here's the proof. Get Mark 13, 32. Number one, Northern Kingdom was conquered in 1492. They've been in the subjects for almost 500 years. So that kills it. And they don't believe in Northern Kingdom. That's the thing. Read Mark 13, 32. The book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 32. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. Not no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son, but the father. So the angels don't know. Christ himself says he say, I don't know when I'm going to return. Only the father knows when I am coming to return. But you watch these. That's I warn you against these Internet, Facebook, YouTube Israelites who hide behind a keyboard and get everybody all deceived, confounded, all con convoluted. Is that a word? Yes. Put you all in a trick bag. Then 2019 come. We're still here. I'm going back in the world. I'm going to join the nation of Islam. That's what's going to happen. Watch. A lot of them, them going to go right back into the world again. So, y'all keep listening to them if you want. I don't care how nice their videos appear. Okay? These people are disobedient. Okay? They're unable to organize. And you know what? You dis Some of them, they got their, the wife is doing the teaching. Some of them got the women reading. Some of the men got head covered and they, they, they got a hole in the top of their little, whatever they wear, a hat the size of a dime. Nobody sees that those, all these things going against the scriptures. Why is the women out there and if on YouTube, yeah, and do this and do that, and men going, con, 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 aquaf, con, aquaf, you stupid idiots. And you don't know what the scriptures say about women, what, it's, what God says about right, the woman. Right. But they're going, yes, sister, all, 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 praises, all praises, all praises. Shut up. Now, the same one talking about I'm changing my name. We're not, we're not Israelites anymore. We're Ivri. And then I'm getting emails from women. We should not call ourselves Israelites. What scripture is that, dumb woman? Right. Tell them, put your husband on the phone. Hang up. What scripture is that? You know, it just it irks me. It really it burns me. They are, and these people are all disobedient. I don't care how pretty they look, how them, they got nice uh, video camouflage. That's what I call it, camouflage. And a lot of them, they want to avoid. Watch what I'm about to say. They say, don't join no camp. Stay away from all Israelite congregations. These are the Facebook Internet ones. Don't join no camp. Stay away. I'm going to show you the danger of that. And by them saying that alone, it proves they hate God's laws. Give me Leviticus 23, too. We ain't got time to play with them. If y'all get this, not y'all in here, but where's, where's, the, where's the online? Is that the online camera? Y'all online, if you're that damn simple, listening to these people, you're going to get caught up. Watch this. I'm going to show you they're deceiving you. Leviticus 23 and 2. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 2. Let's see what God says. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations. The word convocations means assemblings. So these people don't believe the Bible. They say, no, don't join. No, don't assemble with nobody. Stay home by yourself. That is not what we just read. It said his high holidays are holy gatherings, holy convocations. But these people will type their life away. They'll do their little YouTube videos and go, don't listen to those camps. Now, I'm not saying all camps is of the devil, but some of them is okay. Mm -hmm. 
You better hook up. You better. I'm gonna show you. Better get. You better join somebody. Now give me Zephaniah two and one. I'm gonna sh- further prove they're a bunch of liars. The book of Zephaniah, chapter two and verse one. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. You don't gotta obey that. No, no, don't listen to God. Listen to me on the computer. Type, 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 type. Space, type, type, type. Don't go to no camp. Don't gather yourselves together. Just listen to me on YouTube. I'll do my little videos. Stop listening to these people. They are against the one true God. Next scripture, Hebrews 10, 25. I'm taking you from the Old Testament to New Testament. Sure, they are disobedient as hell. They follow the devil. I don't care how many scriptures they quote. I don't care how pretty they are. Talk about them women. And then you got these, these effeminate men with the women uh, leading the congregation. That, those are the church. What's, what is the church in Revelation 2 called that does that? Not that not you. I'm pointing out here. They got to know, have a clue. Come on, somebody. Thyatira, which means daughter, church of daughter. And Christ said, he's against them. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and Christ said, I will kill her children. And you want to follow these women. You better do what this Bible says. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. Here we go, New Testament now. The law says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is. Go ahead. But exhorting one another, and so much the more, as ye see the day approaching. But these Israelites on Facebook and YouTube will say, no, don't gather with nobody. No, you don't have to obey none of those laws. That's how evil they are. Give me the next one, Psalms 133 and 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 133, verse 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant. It is for brethren to dwell together in unity. You see that? Brethren to dwell together in unity. But here we go. Facebook, YouTube. No, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. And that's why I stay by myself. And you see all these women on there? That's why I stay by myself. And men too. That's why I stay by myself. Con, 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 con. Give me Acts 1, 13 and 14. You're going to find out that's one of the most, the, you're breaking God's commandments. All these laws we're giving, you're going to disobey that. I'm not saying you got to get with us, but you better gather with somebody. <laughs> Read that. Acts 1. Acts 1, 13 and 14. The book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 13. And when they were come in, they went, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus and Simon and Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and married the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. Do you see even our forefathers, they gathered together with the women. And they gave prayer and supplication to the Most High. But again, YouTube, Facebook, Israelites, don't do it. Don't, girl, don't do it. Brother, you shouldn't do it. Mm-mm, stay away. We're reading God's laws, okay? The Most High Spirit is in the earth to guide us and protect us. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Chapter 4, what verse? Uh, 9, 9 to 12. Watch. This. I want, if, if some of you are dumb as a rock, You should be able to understand what we are about to read right now. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4 and verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Read. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone. You see that? Woe to him that is alone. Go ahead. Woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he had not another to help him up. Because he has not another to help him. That is, this, these, this, are, this is a basic principles about gathering together. And he's just using small numbers here so that you can get it in your head. Go ahead. Again, if two lie together, then they have, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? 
And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So now, that's a basic principle on unity. Very basic. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Even in, what's the name of that movie with the monkeys that could talk? Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. Remember uh, the gorillas is in the cage? The monkeys, yeah. whatever they was. I was. Chimpanzees talking with the orangutan. And Cornelius, I think that was his name. Yep. Caesar. I'm sorry, Caesar. Caesar says he breaks the stick and puts them together. He says, together we are strong. And orangutan says to him, yeah, but monkeys are stupid. <laughs> Because they was down there fighting each other and all that. That's, that's a metaphor for black people. I'm just telling you that straight. It's a metaphor for black people. We have not understood the basic principle of unity. Solomon, king, the wisest king on earth, explained it in Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9 through 12, with such splendor. So with easy numbers, so you can understand. He said two is better than one, and three is not easily, uh, what does it say, broken? So if you can understand that alone, that's why the Lord said convocation. He used words like a gather together. He used words like assemble together. Mm -hmm. That's what he said to do. But not a Negro. No, no, uh, 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 not me. I'm an individual white man. Man, master told me I'm special. I'm an individual. I don't join with nobody. So die, nigga, die. Watch. What do you say, Elsa? Uh, quickly, that's the reason why a lot of us have been pumped up into believing in this me, myself, and I garbage, but the society works in unison. Okay, that when we talked about eugenics, that eugenics tree is a, is a conjunction and an amalgamation of all of the different parts of this system that work together in unison against you. But meanwhile, you and I are fed with this me, myself, and I stupidity. Now I'm going to I'm, I'm give you some brief testimonials which y'all know about. Some of y'all in here, not in here in New York, or maybe, no, not New York. Some of you, where's the line online, that one? Some of you online, y'all know what I'm talking about, in other camps. You had your children taken from you with the uh, accusation of child abuse. What did Unity do? We was able to petition the courts with over 200 names on your behalf. That's what Unity does. We was able to call your social workers. We was able to call prosecutors. And guess what? They were lenient on m many of you. It's more than one. More, I could probably maybe five or more. And got your children back in the home. But the Negro that's alone has no one to stand up for them. Now, hey, what can we do? We can't do nothing for you. You ever see a lion and an Edomite puts his head in the lion's mouth and, a lion, and you're wondering, is the lion going to bite? That's what it's like when you're trying to help somebody you don't know. You want to put your head out there on their behalf. You don't know what you're going to find when you put your head in that lion's mouth. You better, investigate. you better investigate first. Listen good to what I'm saying. Listen good. And what I'm saying, I'm saying for a reason. So as I said, we have reached out to prosecutors on some of your behalfs, uh, your caseworkers on some of your behalfs. Believe it or not, some brothers got warrants. Police was after them. Y'all know some of so we ain't going to call no names. Talk about in other camps even. Call us up. Can you uh, let me know? Now, they'll do videos cursing me out because I'm, I'm a cop. Curse me out, but when they in trouble because Popo is chasing them. Can you give me some advice what I should do? Where's the warrant coming from? Sure did. A bunch of them out there on, on YouTube. We don't be ta telling y'all too much stuff, but these are the things that they're going to do videos cursing us out. I just sit back and go, Brothers, hey, why you help them niggas and they saying all this crap? Hey, it's all right. Most High got this. The Most High going to make all of them eat their words. Because when they need help, call IUIC. We need help. We don't know what to do. But I thought y'all was leaders over there. I thought you did this. Y'all was so great. Now you need our help, our unlearned, us uneducated black folk over here. Yeah, but Bishop, when they need barrier. Uh, when they need money for who they was calling. Oh, yeah. IUIC. Could, some of them could not even bury the dead. <laughs> you understand? It was and they'll do happened. videos and curse us out. Some of the videos be funny. I'll be laughing. Some of the curse. But uh, uh, one thing we do do, Bishop, we, are, we know these brother ignorant. We still go out and help our brothers because we know we each other keepers. Mm -hmm. But the Lord, like you said, will make you eat your words. Exactly. Some of y'all. Now, depending on the speediness of when we hear things, like I said, you in this Bible, you're enemy of the state. They're, the state will look for things to get you on. You women, too. They're going to look. Some cases, some brothers, some sisters get in trouble, and we know them. Mm -hmm. 
you don't have money for a good, because sometimes legal aids are just dumb as hell. You need a good defense attorney. Sometimes we put money up to help you get a good defense attorney. One brother we helped. Y'all know the story. What the nigga do as soon as he got out? Oh, man. What did that nigga do? He gave us the finger. So this is why, remember Christ said, blessed are those that use, I can't quote, use you and despitefully use you. <laughs> yeah, Bishop, you remember the one who did the video in the bathroom, Chris Sessa. Yes. After we deliver him from uh, uh, homeless. homeless. Being homeless. <laughs> Got him a place to live. He going to go in the bathroom. Yeah, you how about some, you how was shy. You niggas ain't right. <laughs> Nigga, we help you get out of jail. Gave you a place to live. Now we the devil. Are you kidding me? This is the wickedness that's out on YouTube. Okay? Stop following people because they got a lot of nice little cute video. You check behind the scenes. You're going to find out much dirt, filth, and evil is out there. Uh, uh, yeah, I want to I wanna see some Bishop. Because that godly going to stand still. Trust me. The, the brother that about these laws, that cannot hide himself. That's why you guys don't understand. If you preach God's laws, you're the light of the world. You're not going to hide yourself. That's why we and I, you, I see, we don't need to uh, 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 talk back when they talk about us. We don't need to make another video about them. We know that God will fight for us. We don't need to fight these brothers. Some of your cases, uh, some of y'all got uh, locked up from things that happened before you came into the truth. Some of y'all was on probation, things like that, or parole. And you, for some reason, you found yourself in a situation and beyond your control, because we examine things. We don't, we, we examine things. And we check your history. What's this brother like? Let's check the, uh, what is it called? The uh, court records. We want to know what's going on. And then we'll help you. But if it's too far gone, we can't help you. And you're getting locked up. What do we do? We make sure your damn commissary is filled to the max. That's what we do for you. You better believe that. All right? We go visit you, like the scriptures tell us to do. And we make sure your family's taken care of. Your wife ain't scrimping and uh, scrolling on the street. Because now you locked up, and I'm telling y'all true things that have occurred. I ain't making nothing up. Brother locked up. His wife can't even make ends meet now. So we got to step in for one or two years to help her out till your behind get out. I'm going to be nice. I'll be nice. You check out some of these other camps. You watch what they do. They're going to treat you like you got a parking ticket and say, you handle that. Yah, by Shem, Yah, Shai, Barakatha, Shalom, Hamashiach, Yah, Shai. Watch. That's all you're going to get. Let's give me 1 John 4 and 1. The book of 1 John, chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So I'm telling y'all, watch these Facebook YouTube people who have no, they have no congregation. When you don't have a congregation or anything like that, you're saying you're not able to handle the responsibility of deal. Because guess what? All these people in here, guess what? It means a whole lot of problems up in here. That's what it means. That means you got to counsel a whole lot of people. That's why we got brothers set up. We got senior sisters set up. Help them with this. Let me know what's going on with that. There's a great weight of responsibility. When you see these people alone on YouTube with these nice little cute videos telling you don't deal with a group of people, Watch those evil spirits who hate responsibility. Then you got the next group. They got the women teachers. One brother sitting there. His wife is doing all the reading. Breaking, she's breaking scriptures. There's a bunch. I've seen at least three different ch channels with women saying that they believe. What's the name they got for the most? High? What's the name they follow? Yahuwah. 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 That's the name they got. Yeah. And to give me 1 Corinthians 14, 34. You mean they keep law. But they never read this, 1 Corinthians 14, 34 and 35. Yeah, they read it. They just don't believe it. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 14, verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. So just like in the Christian church, women hate that law. Amongst Israelites, you have women who hate that law. They will not obey that. I'm not, I'm not following that. I don't, I don't accept that. White man gave me authority. White man gave me power and authority. Okay, you're going to die with that white man too. Give me the one in Timothy, 1 Timothy 2, uh, 11 and 12. We all going to keep these laws. That's why some of you are going to get offended. So I don't like that law, so I'm out. And I'm going to call that black one up there with the mic, the nigger, the mm -hmm. devil. I hate his black behind. But it's okay. I love you. 
Read that. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. So you mean these prophetesses never read this? The script, let me ask the brothers. Listen, good brothers. I'm going to see if y'all been studying. Can a woman teach anything? Who says no? Raise your hand. Who said no? Raise your hand. Let me see. Don't be scared. Let me see. see. Be honest. Raise your hand high. Okay. No. He says no. Two no's. Two no's. Can a woman teach something, brothers? Okay. Right. Get Titus 2 real quick. This is for you, brother. Say no. Get Titus 2. I just, I had a funny feeling about that. Titus 2. The scriptures are very balanced, very well balanced. You got it, Ezekiel? Come on. Titus 2, 3, and 4, 3 to 5. Yeah, uh, yeah Bishop. Yeah, and, yeah my, my wife was Next telling my son something. He, she, my son said, woman's supposed to be sound of Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> I know he got popped, right? The shoe came off. <laughs> Read that. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So brothers, can women teach? Yes, in their order. The order we were just given the order right there, in that order. Don't go outside that. Okay, so now, what some YouTube brothers said that we can deal with prostitutes. What is the law on prostitutes? And guess what? A prostitute ain't just uh, you waiting for the madam on the corner. Prostitute might be that hoe on the corner or the hoe at home. You just give her a happy meal. She'll do whatever you want. Scriptures, come on. Let me see who's studying. Brother right there. Give me your name. No. Right there. Yeah. Right there. Shalom, sir. Uh, Shalom. Aaron. Aaron. Go ahead. Where are we going? Uh, you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16, uh, 15. Let's read that, please. The Let's book of that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? A harlot is a hoe. Go ahead. God forbid. Mm, meaning no. What? Know ye not that which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. So all the men that she been with, now all them, because all that DNA is up in her, now it's on you. Now you wonder why you act crazy. She crazy and you crazy because you joined with her. Go ahead. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. You hear that? That's what it's called. When you deal with harlots, it's fornication. That's what it is. The Bible says flee that thing. Yeah, Bishop, they prove that you chew. You see them on YouTube. They bugged out their mind. Exactly. Exactly. Now, give me Jude chapter 4. Jude verse 4. The book of Jude verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God. So now, can we look up the word? Come on, look up lasciviousness, because that's not a n normal Negro word. We don't use that word normally. I'm like, what the hell is that? Let's look it up. Then we'll get to understanding of that verse. Turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. So, read Jude 4 again for me. The book of Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Let me explain that. Multiple wives, for example. When our forefathers in the Old Testament had multiple wives, guess what we had? Number one, we had our own land. Number two, we were ruling. Number three, we were wealthy. 
land, mm -hmm. ruling, and wealth. Right. Those two, write that down. Land, ruling, and wealth. That's what we had. Now you got brothers working at a Waffle House <laughs> with two, three, four wives. That is, and they can't provide for them. That is turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Because Christ said, one. Until when? Until the kingdom. These brothers, no, 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 no. I'm going to have two, three, four, five, as many as I could get. That is turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. Watch this. You will not find a scripture of Israel being in captivity with more than one wife. You're not going to find it. Check yourself. Go check. Find Israel in slavery with more than one wife. Challenge yourself. Say, I'm going to find it. A lascivious Negro will try. He well, will try, try to bend the scripture and come back with a lie. Tell my son he found it. Well, you go. You go on right ahead. You go on right ahead. Blue letter. The next, the next group says we can gangbang and we can rape. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Some of y'all don't believe. I know some of the women don't believe me. I got to show a video. I'm sorry. I got to show the video. It's a short video. But what I want you to do, once you watch the leaders of, the, of that camp, then watch the students. Watch with the students. I got to say this first. I got to set it up. Give me Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22. We're going to read verse 25 to 29. Their point is verse 28, and I'm going to show you their point, what they're trying to say. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy. Now, I normally don't show these people. But y'all not going to, some of you, women are not going to believe me. They think I'm lying. <laughs> the ones that are used to defame the whole nation itself. Exactly. The Esau pinpoints this particular group ahead, to defame and demoralize all Israel. That's why you got Israel saying, I'm not an Israel no more. Because this particular group is making all of us look bad. Mm -hmm. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 25. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field. Betrothed means she's engaged. And the man force her. And he lie with you see force, that means he rapes her. And lie with her. He has sex with her. Then the man only that lie with her shall die. Only, the judgment is that man only shall die. Go ahead. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. But unto the female, the girl, you shall do nothing. Go ahead. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. Uh -huh. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. So the Bible says rape is like murder. You take an engaged woman and force her to have sex with you, God compares that to murder. He says kill the man, but only kill him. Leave the woman alone. Now watch the next one. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried. She screamed out. Start about the same from verse 26 to 27 goes together. Go ahead. And there was none to save her. Okay. Now, verse 28 is where they get their doctrine from. Go ahead. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed. She's not engaged. And lay hold on her. And he lie with her, and they be found. Wait. That now, you see where it says lay hold on her, right? Mm -hmm. They say that lay hold on her means you bust upside the head, you stab her or whatever, and you make you have sex with her. Watch what the next part says so you know it's not talking about that. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. Stop. I'm going to see who's thinking. After you do this to the woman, it says you take her to her father. Imagine, I don't know if you brothers got daughters. Just think. Somebody brings your daughter, beat the hell up. Talking about here, here's 50 shekels. What do you think you're going to do? He's going to be done. He's going to be under and over. He's going to be finished. So obviously, that ain't talking about you beat the hell out of the woman. Read it again. Then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver. And shall be and shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. Then it says he can't put her away. He got to deal with her as a husband all the rest of his life. So is that talking about pow, pow? Is that that? That ain't talking about that. 
Yeah, Bishop. With the verse before that, he read it so fast, you didn't catch up with it. What? The verse before that verse, he read. Read 28 again. Verse 28. That be right. Right. Found. Yeah. right, right. That mean, if you be found with it, that means it's a consent mm -hmm. thing. Right. You meet me over there, I'm going to make it happen. That's a consent mm -hmm. thing. Nah, but the on. problem is they've been reading too much Hebrew and can't <laughs> understand English. That's what the problem is. The English just right. tore them up. Right. If they be found, meaning that's consensual. Right. Read, 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 the, read the bottom part. Uh, if a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found. Right. And they be found. Read verse 22. Verse 22. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband. Now, why is, what's the word be found translate to? Caught. These are acts of things that should not be done. Right, right. You get caught in the act. So in 28 and down, it's going into a couple that goes to have sex together, don't want to get married. They just want to screw around. But right. they get caught. So now the man has to stick with that now. Like some of them up in here got yeah, exactly. caught. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And you know the Negro was no daggone good, but you caught. Now, why, now I'm going to show you all the video. It's, on, it's very short. It's short, but I know some of y'all don't believe me. The evil of YouTube Israelites. You, you know what I'm talking about? Don't pull the wrong video. Yeah, there we go. That's it right there. It's four minutes. Wait, wait, wait. Before you play it, that is the teacher right there, the light-skinned brother, and the other one next to him. Those are the leaders of the congregation. Watch their students near the end of the video. Go ahead. Look, I have two daughters that are virgins. Remember, Lot was known for what? His righteousness, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. They're virgins. Go ahead. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And you, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. What does that mean? You can gang rape them. So these women, the bottom line is these women are not to be put on a pedestal. Yeah, these women are messed up. All right, they're, they're, they're sub, really they're subhuman creatures. Wait, play that again. Y'all missed what he just said. Go back. Look, go back what he said about women. Go back. Y'all, some of y'all talking. Go ahead. You mean you can gang rape them. So these women, the bottom line is these women are not to be put on a pedestal. Yeah, these women are messed up. All right, they're, they're, they're sub, really they're subhuman creatures. Just be for real. You women are subhuman creatures. Wow. What scripture is that? Where does it say that? That's in that nigga's head. That's where that's at. That ain't in no Bible. <laughs> now, let's play on. Go ahead. Now, now, what, what if someone is overwhelmed by the spirit of the most high God? And he reads your scripture, and he take your daughter, and he just rape your daughter. What do you say to that? If he if he live like you live, walk like you walk, talk like you talk. You because right, right. y'all y'all live amongst each other. Yeah. Y'all live amongst each other. So what happens when one of y'all feels so overwhelmed by the spirit of God that when you see one of each other's daughters, you just grab her up? You gonna tell one of these brothers here? Come on, you know the doctrine. You know how it get when you get. Well, well, answer, 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 answer it. Just, we just but if it did happen. You would let allow it to happen. What? Yeah. Because you go back to the scriptures. You're supposed to be a brother. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, you you want to allow one of your brothers to rape Wait. your daughter. You say rape as if uh, rape simply means to grab. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, 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 no. We're talking about. No, we read the verse. We read the verse no, where think, someone was. So you got too in the kingdom of heaven. Hey, no, 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 no. We read the verse, man. When the kingdom is established, we're going to get women when they 12 years old. Right. All right? Say it again. As soon as they start in the kingdom of heaven, when they're period starts, that's when they become a woman. Okay. All right? So we're going to deal with them when they when their period uh, 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 starts. Right. When that's their when monthly starts. Have, babies. Question. Right. have sex with sex. them. Have babies, man. Bro, with 12-year-olds. Brother, there's this. In the kingdom, we're going to do that, man. We're going to get them young. We're going to get them young. And the kingdom is going to get The kingdom is right. three uh, fantasies of women is to get raped. Right. Oh, pause. There's a lot of cursing in this part. Now, these are their students. I'm sorry, so if y'all want to take your kids out, because there's a lot of F-bombs and evil in this part. These are their students. Now, go ahead, go back, because he, he said the top went. I want to know if the women's fantasy is this thing. Go back. Go ahead. Stop. You can know the kingdom. The kingdom is right. three uh, fantasies of women is to get raped. Who are you? Who are you? Go ahead, do something. I 
didn't know the top fantasy of women is to get raped. That was an Edomite ass in Who are you? <laughs> go ahead, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back a little bit. Come on, look, can we get through the video, please? See, y'all didn't believe us that there's crazy Israelites out there. Go ahead, go ahead. The king and the kingdom is right. The top three uh, fantasies of women is to get raped. That's right. Who are you? Who do you think Go ahead, do some research. Is, oh, my God, do some I've research. done research. You know, okay. I'm taking look up, Okay, look it up right now. Those are your daughters? My daughter, yeah. We're going to take your daughters, yeah. right? They're going to be our concubines. That's right. Hey, somebody yeah. might pick hey, you up, too. Hi, my friend. I'll pick yep. you up. Yep. A lot of times, these women walk around proud as shit, dressed too proud. Titties out. Proud as hell, man. Yep. There's gonna come a time when the man's just gonna take it. Right. There ain't gonna be no police out here to save you. Yeah. Right, hey, I'm gonna say this, man. Everybody got something, something against rape. If you didn't walk up down these streets and see all these fucking freaks and call women out there, yeah, that's a nigga, dude. Talking about like all these freaks, cat. all these freak ass bitches, and you ain't had the urge to even a thought of raping that bitch? <laughs> hey, you a faggot, man. So all you niggas that come up against that, you a straight faggot. These bitches are offering you pussy. They just playing that little game with you. I don't want you to run that little race. These bitches is coming outside. They want that power. They want yeah. that power. But if you haven't had that thought, man, you're a straight faggot, man. You ain't thought, man, I can, I can easily bust that bitch over the head. You ain't had that thought, man, you're a straight faggot, man. You ain't thought, man, I can, I can easily bust that bitch over the head. You ain't thought, man, I can, I can easily bust that bitch over the head. Take you a faggot, bro. This shit, that's all that I, that's, that's the ideas they putting out with these outfits, man. Look at these little sluts, man. Little sluts like that, they want Jake, man. Little sluts. Little sluts. They want, they want niggas, man. They little want, hoes. Yeah, they want white hoes. Yeah, little white hoes. Cave bitches. They want big, they want big black guys, man. <laughs> Fuck white bitches, man. Right. Yeah, right. White bitches. Right. Fat, ugly, nasty white bitches, man. White bitches are going into slavery, man. That's right. right. All right. All, and, but on this side, guess what? If you look good, you're going to get chased down. You're going to get, hey, look, man, because hey, a rape, the rape, rape isn't just some, oh, we're going to be making love, but we love the white woman, man. We're going to grab you by your fucking leprous hair. All right, might slice your neck a little bit. All right, have you bleeding? Give you a, give you a few jabs, man. These are some crazy people. These dudes, these guys are, are movie stars and horror films. They gotta be. <laughs> but this is the <laughs> Southern Poverty Law says that we're all the same. Them. Right? Yeah. They say that we all te- we are all not the same. They know we're not the same. But they're putting it in people's but heads. Doing it. That exactly. That's the that's, that's the objective us. of what they're doing. Exactly. So this is the craziness that crazy we have to stuff, deal with. Man. Yo, the dude, the dude says, you can't tell me you don't think about, about when you see a woman, you want to just rape her. Or bust no, upside that don't, the head. Oh, yeah, bust upside the head. That, that ain't going to run in that none, of, in none of, in no right, anybody that in their right state of mind, that's not going to run through their mind. Right. So, Bishop. You understand? The only, that dude, in him talking, yeah. I could tell that dude already raped at least two, three different females in his life already. You can tell the way how we talking, man. You know, you're a rapist. And you know the scripture <laughs> said you're going to heap on to yourself teachers having itching ears? Right. So now if you got brothers that struggling with a rapist spirit, they like raping females and so forth. Rape is an ugly man's doctrine. Right. Yeah. You exactly. can't yeah, talk can. to a woman. You can't yeah. get one. So you're going to rape. Bust upside the head and take it. That's yep. the reason why they can't understand Deuteronomy, what we just read, verse 28. That's why they can't understand that. Right. Right, but brothers that got that doctrine, they going they going they that got fighting with that spirit, that don't want to give it up, they gonna heap, they gonna go to brothers like that and learn. Right, for you understand? Say, for him to say that, he's saying basically, uh, as a man think, if so is he. Mm-hmm. For him to say that, yep. think that, that means he is a rapist. That's exactly. Don't deny That's I don't rape nobody, from. but if you're saying that crosses your mind, then you are a rapist. Exactly. Exactly. So we just had to. I really don't show other camp videos, but I just had to show that it was too outrageous and it was too crazy. I said they won't believe me if I just tell them. I got to show. Unbelievable. Them. And I don't watch them fools, but that was that was ridiculous. That was crazy. We read this earlier. Many of us, some of us in here, come from broken homes. Some of us in here and online lack parenting skills. Believe it or not. I know all these women think they're excellent parents. All women say they're good parents. I have not met a sister yet that admitted she don't know what the she's doing. I ain't met one yet. But yet many of them are up in court getting hemmed up in the white man's court system. Again, let's re- we read this earlier. I want you to pay close attention. Titus 2, 3 to 5. The book of Titus. 
The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 3. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers. False accuser means gossiping, slandering. Go ahead. Not given too much wine. Drunk. Teachers of good things. These older sisters ought to be teachers of good things. Go ahead. That they may teach the young women to they, be sober. They ought to teach the young women to be sober. That means clear-minded, not high. Not high. Go ahead. To love their husbands. They have to be taught how to love their husbands. To love their children. These women have to be taught how to love their children. Now, this is where all the problems are going to come. Watch as the class goes on. I'm going to show you how a lot of these women and you men married to them are going to get in trouble behind the part with the husbands and the children. Go ahead. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home. Good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now watch what I'm about to say. Men would say that to age women, right? Let me tell you, you sisters in here that's 20, 25, you're not an age sister. You're not. You've been in the truth for six months, and you fancy yourself knowing something because you watched a YouTube video. You ever see these brothers on YouTube? They'll watch 100 hours of our classes and then set themselves up as an elder. They've been studying for a few months, watching all our videos and go, I'm an elder now. No, that's not how it works. Where's the experience? Where's the time and patience? Okay, you know, you lack that. Trial, no trials, nothing. So, today you got young sisters, counseling sisters. Listen to what I'm about to say. Some of them won't get mad now. I got cursed out two weeks ago about saying this, but I got to go back to it. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Today you got young sisters, counseling sisters, to give their babies a vegan diet. Oh. Oh, Y'all get mad now. Y'all get ready. I'm going to take the heat. I'm going to take the heat. You, young sisters are watching YouTube videos telling other sisters, give your baby a vegan diet. Now, say something else. I got to find something real quick. Say something. Lava talk. <laughs> Go ahead, Lava. Yeah, Go you ahead. know, I'm glad uh, Bishop said he's going to touch on that. The last verse you just read. Read it again. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. To be discreet, uh -huh. chaste, keepers at home, uh -huh. good, obedient to their own husbands. You see that? So their sisters that are set up to be their elder sisters, she also was obeyed to her husband. She learned that from her husband, how to guide the sisters. Everything coming from the men. That's why you guys don't understand. Everything coming from the men. The young, the older sister get that from her husband, how to deal with the sisters. Because God gave him the spiritual understanding of it. You understand? Then she able to go through it, know how to humble herself. She able to deliver it to the younger sister. How to deal with her husband. How to deal with the kids. How to love their kids. Go ahead. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Mm-hmm. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. That's why we have to understand. The chain still go by the men. You understand? Then these, these the, uh, elder sisters, she been in this long enough experience herself that she able to deliver it to the young woman. But a lot of time I heard sister just came in, two, three, uh, I say a year, two years, she, have a, she become a counselor overnight. Mm -hmm. You understand? Then I heard these simple sisters, they just came in. You know, like we telling, hey, pick a counsel out of a thousand. You know who she will pick? Their sister will be in here the same age as her. <laughs> That's how you know that your mind is not here yet. Exactly. Right. So now, Deacon I thought made mention of our, the dietary law. Give me Genesis 1, 29, 30. Now, what I'm about to go over is the part what I want you to pay close attention to. Because not only are our laws contrary to Edom's, but they're going to look for laws that break their laws to come after us for. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in, in the which tree is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. What verse was that? That's 29. Read, and to every beast of the earth, 
and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. So man and beast and birds, we all had a vegan diet. Everybody see that? That was the beginning. Then go to Genesis 6, 21. This is Noah. The book of Genesis, chapter 6 and verse 21. And take thou unto thee of all the food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. So Noah had to gather herbs and things, vegetables, to be food for man that was on the ship, which is him, his sons and their wives, and for the animals that was on the ark with him. Everybody understand that? Because I remember somebody asked the question, how come the lions and the tigers didn't eat the other animals? They had a vegan diet. That's why. So now, watch this. Get Genesis 9, verse 3. The book of Genesis, chapter 9, and verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. This is after he got off the ark. This is when God introduces meat into our diet. Read it again. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. So just as the green herb, now God gave us meat. Now, people say, well, that means he ate pig and scorpion. No, that don't mean that. Go to Genesis 8 and 20. That showed Noah knew the dietary law. Genesis 8 and 20 proves that. Write these scriptures down. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 20. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. That's proof that Noah understood the law of what animals was clean and what animals were unclean. Y'all see that? Okay. So he didn't run around eating pig and all that. He knew what was clean. He knew what was not clean. So from there, give me Sirach 37 in the Apocrypha. Sirach 37, Ecclesiasticus. 37, you got it? Yes, sir. We want verse 29 and 30. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, verse 29. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. That means sweets. Go ahead. Nor too greedy upon meat. So a part of the dietary law is be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. You know, some of your kids love sweets, candy, candy, candy. It says don't be unsatiable in any dainty thing. Nor what? Nor too greedy upon meat. And don't be too greedy upon meats. Next verse. For excess of meats bring it sickness. See that? Too much meat, God says, will bring sickness to you. Go ahead. And surfiating. Surfiating goes into sickness too. Will turn I mean, into- sir, fire, I'm sorry, bring oh, excess, overeating. Sir, fighting is overeating, meaning excess. And what? And sir, fighting will turn into cola. Cola means sickness, okay? So God is telling us, what to, although he gave us the diet of meats, he says don't eat too much. If you overeat, it's going to make you sick. So there's about, everybody see that? Everybody understand that? Now, I know some of us, we like chicken off seven days a week. No, you don't eat it seven days a week. The Lord has shown us don't live like that. Now, I'm going to show you what vegans do. Not you all up in here. It's all right to be vegan if you want. Give me Daniel 1. I'm going to show you what's hap- what happened back then and what's happening today with children. Because vegans, not you all up in here, vegans on Facebook say don't give your children any meat. And they make it as if it's a sin. I'm talking about, like, you know when you're a toddler, when they can gain a few teeth, they can bite. Right, right. I hope y'all know what I'm saying. I ain't saying give a, a, a breastfeeding baby a piece of chicken. I ain't saying that. I ain't that damn stupid. Excuse me. Watch this. Daniel 1 and 5. This is where vegans on YouTube and Facebook get the understanding in terms of children being vegans. Watch this. The book of Daniel, chapter 1 and verse 5. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So now, they had to eat of the king's provision for three years before they could stand before King Nebuchadnezzar. Everybody understand that, right? Now jump down. I'm going to get to the point. Jump down to verse 8. We're going to read 8 through 16. Verse 8. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would 
that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. Because Daniel and the brothers with him, they were eunuchs. Go ahead. And the prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink. For why should, for why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then shall he make me endanger my head to the king. So what's happening? Daniel said, hey, we don't want to eat the king's food. The prince of the eunuch says, listen, the king will kill me. If you look thinner and smaller amongst the other Hebrews that are here, the king will kill me because he put y'all in my care. And understand what's happening, right? Read on. Then said Daniel to And remember, Daniel, and these are young boys. The book of Daniel just took place after the history of Susanna. You remember the history of Susanna? And it tells you Daniel was a young man. Right. So this after that is when they went into captivity. Daniel may have been about, let's say, 17, 18, somewhere around there. Read on. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. Look what he says in verse 12. Prove thy servants. Meaning prove us. Test us. I beseech you ten days. Test us for ten days. And let them give us pulse. Pulse means herbs and vegetables. That's what pulse is. Everybody see that? Give us uh, herbs and vegetables for ten days to eat and water to drink. Give us that for 10 days. Read on. Then let our countenances be then let our countenances be looked upon before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat and that and as thou seest deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. Mm -hmm. At the end of 10 days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat and wine that they should drink and gave them pulse. So y'all see what happened. This is where they're getting it from. Okay. But like Deacon Ithan said, the herbs, the pulse that we have today <laughs> is not like they had in the past. That's why, I th was it last week's class? We went over GMOs and all of that. Yeah. And because some of you vegans, and I ain't got no problem with you, but y'all swear by it, and you give it to young kids. Now, this is what's happening when you're young kids. Your young kids are becoming now, what's the word? Malnourished. 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 Give me Sirach 38. Sirach 38. Because the, this is the thing. Listen good. These young sisters that y'all are counseling with, these young girls are teaching you, don't go to the doctor. The doctors are all even. I'm not. Now, we went over class showing that they're all plots against our people. But that's why the scriptures say do nothing without counsel and let prayer go before every enterprise. Now, as we read Sirach 38, I know black people especially, we don't like doctors. But I'm going to tell y'all, especially you older ones. <clears throat> <laughs> go to the doctor once in a while but let me say this when y'all have babies your children should must go with regular checkups i'll give an example there was a brother here his he took his daughter to the doctor and you know the doctor they got those machines those clamps they put on your head they check the baby's skull growth the, the length of the bones and all that. And they were able to tell the brother who was here is that, hey, one side of the skull is not um, developed. developed like the other side. How do you have the baby sleep? And he said, well, I think the left side or right side. And he was explaining, you got to turn the baby over during the night to so that it evens out. And they had, so he said, listen, have the your baby wear a, a helmet for X amount of time and then bring her back. And I'll check the skull to see if it grew out. If he had not taken the baby to the doctor. Would he have known that? No. no, because they have instruments to do measure. We don't have that in here. Some of y'all got a doctor and never become a doctor. That's how dumb our people are. Don't learn nothing. No, no, no. We got to stop with the stupid thoughts. 
We need doctors. We need pediatric. We need these. We need lawyers. We, as long as we're here, we need these things. That way we could go to our people and say, hey, can you help me with this? Help me with, can you? But until that day, find a doctor that you like and say, can you check the baby? And the doctor will check. Now watch this. Sirach 38, verse 1. The book of Sirach, Ecclesiastic, is in the Apocrypha. Now, just, just, some of y'all are going to say, but this is talking about Israelites. Yes, this is talking about Israelite physicians, but guess what? We ain't got no Israelite physicians! Read, I'm sorry. Sirach, 38, <laughs> verse 1. Honor a physician with the honor due unto him, for the uses which ye may have of him. For the Lord hath created him. For, for of the Most High cometh healing, and he shall receive honor of the king. Who does, the most, who does healing really come from? The Most High. Read on. The skill of the physician shall lift up his head, and in the sight of great men he shall be in admiration. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor them. And you know what? When you take your baby to the doctor, I got a bunch of kids. I got kids. Some of y'all got a bunch. You got a lot of kids. Wow. Bishop Kanai. Woo! That's Jacob. But guess what? We take our children to, to the doctor. Doctors check the weight of the child, not only the bone development. They check the diet of the child. They say, give your child A, B, C. Now, if you tell your, your doctor, listen, I like to raise my child on a vegan diet. What can you say? Do that. You know why? You want to create a paper trail. What the doctor said, what he did not say. Because if you don't, and somebody accuse you of malnourishing those kids, I'm going to go into that in a few minutes. Go ahead. Go ahead back. Verse 5, was not the water made sweet with wood, that the virtue thereof might be known? And he, and he had given men skill, that he might be honored in his marvelous works. With such doth he heal men, and taketh away their pains. Of such doth the apothecary make a confection, and of his works there is no end. And from him is peace over all the earth. My son... In thy sickness be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, and he will make thee whole. You see that? Now, this goes for a lot of us. My son, in thy sickness be not negligent, but pray. Now, as we read, I'm, this cut me too, because I hate doctors. They make me sick. But I know I have to go. At times, I got to go. And like I told you last week, the, the regular doctor was in a sort of nurse came in. It was a black, it was a sister. And she said, um, I'm going to prescribe this, this, and this. She said, but these two here? She said, be careful. If your nose and ears start to bleed, I said, well, which ones? She said, these two. I was like, okay. I said, I ain't messing with it. I ain't even, but I'm glad she told me. So I went and got the little prescription. I threw them two things in the garbage. I ain't using that stuff. Go ahead. My son, <laughs> my son, in thy sickness, be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, and he will make thee whole. Leave off from sin. And order thine hands aright, and cleanse thy heart from all wickedness. Now, the wickedness he's going into, remember, I'll say this. The first thing when we think wickedness, we think automatic, which it does cover. Wickedness covers a vast amount of things. It could be sexual immorality. It could be hatred. Anything the most I can bring sickness on. But guess what it also brings that we just read? Anybody thinking? What did we just read? Huh? What did we read? What do we read? Overeating. Overeating, gluttony. That brings sickness as well. That goes into wickedness too. You eat all that meat, the most I already warned us, you're going to get sick. Now here we are, sick as hell. Read on. Give a sweet savor and a memorial of fine flour and make a fat offering as not being. Then give place to the physician, for the Lord hath created him. Let him not go from thee, for thou hast need of him. Believe it or not, until we have our own doctors and pediatricians, we have need of this man's medicine or this man's uh, treatment until our people who claim. And guess what? And, and you self-medicating brothers, you know what I'm talking about, I thought, right? He tried it. Doctor said, do A, B, and C. Some of y'all in here, don't do that. Do this. I saw a video. Here he is. <laughs> what the hell happened? Take him to the hospital. What the hell's going on? <laughs> then he's going around on a damn wheelchair. <laughs> so what's up? 
Stop with your self medic. There ain't no damn doctors. <laughs> did not happen. I exaggerated it. I exaggerated a lot. But he was in a little scooter. He was jacked up. We sit in the hospital with him, like, stop listening to these YouTube people, bro. Stop it. But all praise is he's here with us. He's very healthy today. All praise to the most high. So the point that we read. We have to check the doctor with something, especially if y'all got babies. They're going to get y'all with the babies. Watch this. Give me 1 Peter 4, please. 1 Peter 4, 14. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4 and verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Go ahead. But let none of you suffer as a murderer. I want you to look at this right, very carefully. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief mm -hmm. or as an evildoer. That evildoer covers a whole litany of things. Go ahead. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. Go ahead. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. And we know the word Christian translates to the anointed. Okay, if you suffer as the anointed, let him not be ashamed. Go ahead. But let him glorify God on this behalf. So I want to look at verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evil doer. The evil doer, I want it. Can we look up this definition? Look up child abuse, please. Look up child abuse. Okay, physical maltreatment or sexual molestation of a child. Look, child abuse means physical maltreatment or sexual molestation of a child. That falls under child abuse. Look up child neglect. Child neglect is a form of child abuse. Let me read it again. Child neglect is a form of child abuse and is a deficient and is a def, def what's that word deficit. deficit in meeting a child's basic needs including the failure to provide adequate health care supervision clothing nutrition eh, eh, nutrition housing as well as their physical emotional social educational and safety needs there's a whole lot with child neglect and this is one of the ways that esau is hemming Husbands and wives up. You already got a strike against you for being Israel. No, let's say it this way. You already got a strike for being black, number one. Black, poor, and Latino. Now you Israel with these strange laws. Now you come in with a baby who is on a vegan diet. And a doctor has told you the baby's malnutritioned. Now the doctor will say, listen, baby's not re nur malnourished. Feed it this, this, and this. Now, I don't know how old some of y'all are. When I was young, when I was a young boy, I remember down south, it was nasty as hell, but they forced it on us. They would put collard greens in the baby milk, and they would cut a little hole. This is when we got a little older. They would cut the top and just feed the baby with, with the greens and the milk all mixed. Or some of them they did with beets. Y'all never had that? Nobody know what I'm talking about? But y'all know what I'm talking about? Liam, no, but you real young, but I'm surprised you know. Or Judah, Judah, there you go. <laughs> Judah know that stuff. You get milk with beets crushed up in it. Next bottle got collard greens crushed up in it. And we had to, we drunk that stuff. That's what they did. And it was the old fat grandmas, grandmas we had, real grandmothers. Not these 30-year-old grandmothers over here, not that. I'm talking about 60, 70-year-old grandmamas who rock you in them big breasts you have and hum and sing to you. That was the good old days. You ain't got them no more. And that's how they, they, we, they fed and they made sure. That, look at them brothers down south, them big burly brothers, grow up on biscuits and all that stuff. <laughs> so child abuse, yeah, what are going to say? Yeah, Ella, yeah. and we just mentioned neglect, right? You just mentioned how, how the elder ladies back in the day, they used to force, force food to young kids to eat because why? Sometimes young kids, they don't want to eat right. You understand? And part of neglect is is make is is make is is you not feeding them right because you know some parents they give their their kids all kind of junk food to eat, yes. you know, make it ease, 
this, that, Wendy's. Ain't nothing nutritious. They ain't eating no vegetables. They ain't eating. You got to balance the diet. You understand? It got to be meat there. It got to be vegetables. It got to be different stuff. You know, kids don't like to eat these stuff. So, and you not feeding your kids on a balanced diet, that's neglect. That's also neglect, man. You know, so that's why we read Titus early on. It says that you younger sisters, you all got to learn from the older sisters how to love your kids. You understand? Because that's something that you all got to learn. You know, you all don't just give your kids anything to eat. Exactly. And if you ain't eating right, you got these women, they want to breastfeed. And if you ain't eating right, your milk come out like a dribble, a dribble. And the milk is all unhealthy. And the doctors are, listen, you can't breastfeed. You've been, you live like you've been living off potato chips all your life. You want to have a healthy diet yourself to breastfeed the baby, which gives the best nutrients. Give me a Matthew 5. Now, this is where y'all going to get mad now. I know some of y'all mad already. Matthew 5, Matthew 5. Once the doctor tells you regarding the baby's diet, follow it. Follow it. Don't go on a YouTube video and change it. I'm talking about, now you're an adult. Y'all can do what y'all want. But with a baby, this is how Esau's going to hem you up and take your children from you. Not only that, give me the scripture that says, be the child on the, thigh, on the sides. The book of Sirach, chapter 30, verse 1. He that loveth his son, cause him off to feel the rod, that he may have joy of him in the end. You give your child the rod. Of correction, because you want to have joy of your child in the end, meaning you're training them the right way, right? Okay? He that he that chastises his son have joy in him, and shall rejoice of him among his acquaintance. He that teacheth his son grieveth the enemy. This is why Esau is against us. If you start when you say that you're an Israelite keeping God's commandments, they're pissed off at you. They don't want you teaching your children God's commandments. That's what they don't want. They want you to teach same sex marriages uh pork is good christmas is good that's what they want when they find out get an inkling that you are teaching god's commandments you have grieved them right elder not just that they don't they don't literally want you teaching your kid pulling them out of school and so forth mm -hmm. you understand because you brothers and sisters if you all try doing that they're gonna make it hard on you you understand you're gonna get called from some people people calling you up like and they even saying to you listen i don't know why they making me call you and question. This is the first time I ever had to do this. Why? Because the scripture says, he that teacheth his son, grieveth the enemy. You understand? Because you pull your kids out of the school system, that's one less child that being brainwashed by Esau. You know, so that gonna, they gonna, a lot of you brothers that's homeschooling, is certain, certain procedures you gotta follow when you're doing that. Glad you, you understand? That. It's a certain procedure because I homeschool my kids and Esau be trying their thing with me, but I on top of my game. You understand? In New York City, it's totally different from other, some other states. You got to talk to people that's in the educational system, find out ways and how you go about taking your kids out of school to homeschool because you can't just pull them out of school and say, I'm homeschooling. No, they're going to lock you up. Yep. You're going to go to jail. You understand? Because that's what? We just read it. That's neglect. Right. You understand? That's neglect. They had that in the definition up there. They said, or, or if the neglect to give him his educational needs. That's what I thought. I didn't think y'all saw that because they listened. On, that's why I said it's a lot in there. Right. And so, that's what he's talking about. You might, you have to do it the right way. Right. So See you, that one at the bottom? Right. So neglect is so educational and safety. All that's a form of neglect. Yep. Right. And yeah. even, even in you taking out the kids out of school and you... You, got, you better make sure that you're teaching them something right. because Esau is going to check at the, um, what they got? They got, every, the kids the on them every semester, they, 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 they do a test to make sure that they are standardized, standardized tests. tests. In New York, it's is, 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 is real. It's real. They really on it. Some, some they really serious on it. Right. So if the some kids on them don't pass that test, they're going to force you to put your kids back in school. You understand? And if you say you ain't putting your kids back in school, they can lock you up and do whatever they want to do with you. Right. So, so even the education, that's very serious. You brothers and sisters, that's homeschooling. You understand? As I say, New York is a little harder. All the state, they, some of these states, they don't really care. But guess what? They're going to use stuff like this to come after us. You understand? They're going to use stuff like this to come after us. Like thinking Malachi and myself, I also homeschool my kids. You got to make sure you take counsel from those who take the right channels. Don't do it yourself. 
Go to those who know what they're doing, how to go about it. Don't just go on YouTube and just Google it and go, oh, I got it. And get messed around. Your kids are gone. <laughs> yeah. And what they also do is when they take your kids from you, they'll put them in the, in the hands of either heathen-minded jakes or heathens themselves. Your kids end up learning Christmas, New Year's, birthdays. That's what they do. That's the oh, ma- that's eating the- pork. All that. They'll change their whole right. mindset yeah, and their diet them. entirely. And you can't do nothing about it. You can't, they'll cut your visits off. They'll ostracize, ostracize you from your kids entirely. Right, because they're already monitoring us. It's like those of y'all that do have kids going to the school, they already know the type of person is because they, they put us in a black militant hate group. They put us in a, in a cult. You understand? Because a couple of times when my son was, used to go to school, my, my kids, a couple of times I go to the school, I want to go up in there. I, we went up in there, me and my rib. I tell him, listen, I don't want my son celebrating Christmas. I don't want my son um, pledging the legion to the flag of America. You understand? The last time I went up in there, they had him doing that thing. I got so mad. I said, he ain't going back. I ain't sending him back to them school again. Because I talk to the teachers and them. But what they do, they make the kids and them feel awkward or, and so forth and, and, and out of place. Yep. You understand? Yeah, that, yeah. Right. when they when they celebrating, they they pagan, they, they Christmas and they birthdays and so forth. You understand? So that's why I, I pull my kids out of there. But the thing is that they watching you from ever from from since then they watching you. So when you pull out your kids now, they going they going to set certain things on you to 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 make sure you on top of your game. You understand? Because they already label you as a as a um as hate a cult, group. or as a um extremist and so forth as a hate group. So they already on you. So you brothers got to be on top of your old game. Yeah, and negligence doesn't have to be because of intent. That's another thing that people also mention. Ne- negligence does not only mean because you didn't uh, know it. They still charge you. Yep. Yep. Rather yep. it's by omission or what they call it, or uh, uh, neglect by omission. Mm-hmm. Rather you knew about it or not. They don't care about that. It all falls upon the neglect. Y'all yep. got to be careful right. on that. Right. Yeah. Did, yeah, um, I also want to speak to the sisters that cannot do it. You understand? Then they will do it just because we say so. Then why why they watch and show? They put this t- they open the TV, leave their child right in front of the TV. If you cannot do it, sister, don't do it. All right, don't don't let. Uh, uh, if you're not gonna go by the guidelines, then you're gonna watch shows. Uh, uh, Jerry Sprinkler, why your children is in front of the Tom and Jerry? Don't do that. You understand? Is neglect like they call it? Okay. Neglect, whatever the word neglect. he saw used. Neglect. neglect. Ne- hey, Ella, you you um you you saw the video. There's a video with a sister that went to jail for homeschooling. Yeah. You saw that video? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had a. I think you had to take the kid out X amount of months before, and she did it like maybe I think a month before. She didn't listen, and now they took the kids from her. Bad, terrible story. And there's another case that's with some Israelites. Very, very similar, accusing them of uh, intentionally mal, uh, neglecting their children, abusing them, which is not true. They didn't purposely do any, any of that. But because they didn't follow certain guidelines, that's how Esau is getting them. Right. Read Matthew 5, 25 and 26. We didn't finish the rock. Oh, we didn't? No. Okay. Well, we at first, uh, we got to jump to verse 15. Okay, go ahead. Beat them on the sides. Yes. The book yeah. is... The book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 12. Bow down his neck while he is young. Give him chores. Go ahead. And beat him on the sides while he is a child. When it says beat him on the sides, that's the thigh. While he is what? While he is a child. While he is a child. Now, let me tell you something. Some of y'all keep beating the child when they get older. Well, let me tell you this. I'll say this first. If you know you got a high yellow baby and you beat the, you pop the baby on the side and you know that baby retains red marks and then you take the baby to the doctor, let me tell you, see, I didn't have that problem. I had some dark brown babies. I beat them all day. You don't see no bruises. I said, good. You don't see nothing. Keep it up. But let me tell you this. <laughs> When that child gets older and you say, you know, this child is disobedient and you're still beating it, beating the child, what happens with some of your rebellious kids, those kids run to the police against you. Now, there's a few stories. I'm trying to see which one I want to tell. But I was, okay, this one story I know. Y'all know some of y'all see on YouTube this video, this one particular story. Young girl, brother has um, somebody stay at his house. He's 27. 
He's a friend of theirs. He ends up banging the 15-year-old daughter. <laughs> banging the daughter. Then he says, hey, y'all can stop this. What the hell? So he puts the dude out. The fifth, she wants to go with him. You cannot go with him. She runs away with him and calls the police against the parents and says they abuse us, lock us in a room, which is not true, but she was exaggerating a whole lot of stuff. Um, what did they say? Uh, locked in the room for months. They, right. They give us, a, a, they starve us, cut us off from friends. The police took her, calls, what's it called, CPS? CPS, she called them, got them involved, locked the parents up behind the, now they had to do an investigation. They did an investigate, took the children to doctors, hey, the child is malnourished, which all went back to that, that mindset of don't, some of y'all, we say, of that mindset of don't take your children to doctors. We tell you, take them to regular visits. Please take them to regular visits. Ask them what nutritional values do they need? Are they missing? You know, ask them what foods can I give them that they need to fulfill A, B, and C. Ask them. Um, so anyway, it went very bad. It went downhill from there. And, there's not, and it's not just that cases on YouTube. In IUIC, there have been cases very similar, very similar to that, where older children have turned and said, my daddy or mommy beats me. Then come the cops. That's why it says, read that part again, what you just read. While he's a child, that part. Bow down his neck while he is young. While he's young, operative word young, go ahead. And beat him on the sides. And beat while, him on the sides while what? While he is a child. While he is a child. Y'all are waiting until they're becoming teenagers. Then that teenager goes, I'm calling the cops on you. I'm sick of this. This was happening. Why? Because America's all up in their head. I've told my kids, if you run, tell the cops on me. You will never see me again. And number two, they will put you in a family with some, a devil family That's right. where you're going you gonna to be eating po- you gonna, Everything you don't want to do, they're going to have you doing. And this is what the school system is not telling these kids. You better put the fear of God in these kids. But if you see your child, you got to give me that scripture. That even a child is known by his doing. So know what that is. Yeah, Find Bishop, me that. Bishop, perfect example. Yeah, I pick up a few kids that left the program. One of these girls yesterday, she, she probably in her 13, 14 year old. So she's talking about the other girl behind my, uh, behind my chair. Then she said, yeah, I'll be there if my mom put that in my mouth. I will punch that, you know what I mean, whatever, you know, their name they call today, in the mouth. Then she said, if I go home, she's not home, I will punch her in the mouth too. I'm talking about a 13 year old bishop. You understand? Because these mothers, what they're not doing, they're not. They're not disciplining these kids. Now they're coming at old age. Then they're trying to discipline their kids in an old age where it's not happening. It's not happening. You, you know what's amazing about what Deacon Lava said and the subject that we're going over is because of the psychology that the society puts you into making you think that you love your children by not chastising them. Let me show you what's going to end up happening. Well, if you don't chastise your children while they're young so that they can have some sense when they get older, Guess who's going to chastise them because they have no sense? The police, the FBI, jail, you hear me? All that's going to, that's what's going to, they're going to face the nightstick, the nine millimeter, psych units. They're going to face all that. Simply because you thought you loved them so much and didn't chastise them. You taught them no discipline. Then when they got out here in this world, the society said, oh, you have no discipline? You don't know right from wrong? Throw it behind in jail. Right. That's where it ends up going. And, and and you gotta be like when you meet when when a when a when a um when a kid meets a certain age as you bring it out you can you can't be trying to discipline them time because I remember when I was when I meet fifteen sixteen pops couldn't beat me no more me and my brother and my cousin we used to stand up and take it like this and laughing right. to be laughing once you see a kid start laughing when you start whooping him right. you know time to stop whooping him you know mm-hmm. you got to take a different approach I just used to laugh it gets so point. Because I was rebellious, you know. I, I, when I get old, I, I eat so far that I end up even have to lay hands on him. Like, listen, man, don't hit me no more. You know what I mean? I'm done. You know, don't hit me. No, don't be beating me no more, man. I had to flip him on the floor and like, yo, man, stop beating me, man. I'm a big man. <laughs> I was rebellious as hell. But y'all see this right here? My wife sent me this. Was funny. This is uh, if you, look. Can I see the words, please? When your parents help you with your homework. Do you notice she got one shoe off? 
and it's in her hand. But that's when you're young. That's when they sell a kid and you, you pop them on the side. Pop! All the nations know now that. Now that's some education there. <laughs> Y'all like that, don't you? <laughs> we very familiar with that. When we were young. Very familiar with that. Very familiar with that. Uh, so, uh, remember, on the sides where they're young, they're certain age, they rebellious, stop. You got to find other ways to uh, uh, discipline them. That's the word. Uh, they call it, Esau says you can do the minimum amount of corporal punishment. That's a code word for popping, minimal. Hey, Elder, also, when they meet a certain age, you understand? We got to find another way. And the other way is not, is not um, like putting them out, outside to sleep. Like, you know, right. some doing some, doing, like putting them on the street. Because if a kid is under 18, you remember what we just read? What's neglect? Mm -hmm. You understand? If you don't provide food, education, and certain things for, for a child, that's neglect. So if you have a kid and a kid, you, you whooping that, that, that kid and... You, and then the kid meets an age where you can't whoop him no more and you're finding another way to discipline him and you put that kid out of your house. If that kid under a certain age and he go to authority, you could go to jail for neglect. You understand? You might put him in the backyard to sleep. You understand? The neighbors and them see him in the back, see a kid in the backyard sleep and then the neighbors call, call um, I, what do you call the agency? ACS. ACS. Right. You understand? No, you will know you in jail for neglect, so you brothers gotta use wisdom. Yeah, but then he's also when you uh you heard brother talking about time out on food. He right. used to eat uh five o'clock, he's not gonna eat five no more, he's gonna eat at ten o'clock. Brother, be very mindful, man. That's not scripture. You understand that your uh, your guys gonna get in trouble on that. Right. You we don't, we don't teach, teach that. stuff like that, man. See, uh cause there's some parents that say my form of discipline is I don't feed the child. <laughs> that falls under neglect too. Yeah. You're gonna go to jail for that. Nutrition, you will go to jail for that. Read that. Yeah, but you know the scripture you went out, Bishop. It's all have to do with discipline, man. Even though that the young man having a kid is so young, he was undisciplined anyway. Then now you have child, he thinking that he's time out. Imagine if somebody don't give you no food to eat. How would you feel? You understand? Then that's your own child. You we should not operate like that. Go now ahead, make your child hate you. I make your child attack you and, and go on to the cops and slander you like that, that girl. That's what I'll cause. Right. I'll cause contention in the household. Ezekiel, could you read verse 1 again in, in uh, Sirach 30? The book of Sirach, chapter 30 and verse 1. He that loveth his son. If you love your children, that's what, the, that's what I want to bring in. If you love your children, we say we love our children. Read. Causeth him off to feel the rod. So you have to do this when they're young. Because if you don't, read the rest of it. That he may have joy of him in the end. Because if you don't, you're not going to have joy in the end. You're going to be you're going to be going through the same things that we're talking about when a child gets old enough, where they could just rail on you, tell all kind of evil against you, and all of that. You ain't having no joy at all. You locked up in all kind of foolishness going on dealing with them. Why? Because you did not deal with them when they were young. Yeah. What about stealing, robbing? Now you get their child. You're not feeding their child. Now he's going to go in the store stealing stuff. You understand? That's develop all the spirit, man. Right. We're not supposed to deal like that. And again, dealing with malnutrition, going back to that, not feeding them. When you go into a doctor's office, they have charts with uh, measurement, weight, and height for a child that is supposed to be. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. They got that. All right? So they, they know what they're doing. So just bear with it and just pray to the Lord. Get, find a doctor that you like. All right? Uh, give me Matthew 5 and 25. You don't want Proverbs? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's one in Proverbs? What do we want? 20 and 11. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 11. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. So y'all got to know your kids. If you see a child from a young age, like we talked about before, this child is always on the Internet, always on chat rooms with men. You got a female, little girl. She's always talking to boys. You got a problem right there. You got to keep a sure watch over children like that. Now, when they get older, 15, 6, they start being lewd and all that. You got to find a way. I remember when I was young, they used to ship them down south. You did something wrong up here in the city, you disappeared. That's what they would do. You don't see where she at. They sent because she was embarrassing the family. Always happened. Read that in Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 25. Listen good. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 25. 
agree with thine adversary quickly whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. So you have organizations like ACS, or some states call it CPS, CPS, you have doctors. Now, once they start to build a case against you, they're te- they will, Esau, you know the scripture, give me that scripture, do all things. That's right. That's how you do. Let me tell the white man deal. The white, see, white men know the scriptures. We don't apply, but the white man know them. Yep. You know what it's about Ezekiel? You know what it's about? Yeah. Come on. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. No, no, I want to do all things in writing. Oh, writing. Right. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 43 and 7. Thank you. 42 and 7. Thank you. Thank you. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 42 and verse 7. Deliver all things in number and weight, and put all in writing that thou givest out or receivest in. Esau believe in that thing. Esau has paperwork on top of paper. You go to visit him, he has a chart about you. You take your kids, he got a chart on your children. Their progress and all type of things. We are the ones that don't have paper trails. That's why when we get hemmed up in court, they say, like, I look at them, some of them judge those court shows. They say, do you have any proof and evidence? You got to bring the evidence. They want to see doctor's reports, okay? Photographs is good, but then you know what they say in court? That photo's old. I want to see doctor reports. Who is your doctor? That's what they do with children. So you might ask, well, what, is that, what does this got to do with Matthew 5? It has everything to do with Matthew 5. Your doctor has a chart for the child that gives weight, height, measurements. Um, what else does the chart say? What vitamins it needs and all that. So read that again, Matthew five twenty-five. The book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 25. Let's say in this case, the doctor is your adversary. Let's just hypothetically say the doctor, or let's say it's ACS, CPS, whatever the term is. Whatever it is. These are your adversaries. Read. Agree with thine adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him. Meaning they have not taken you to court. They have not put any charges on you. But they're telling you, do this, that, and the other. You better say, okay, I'm going to get it done. I'm not talking about vaccines and nothing like that. I'm, not, I'm going to touch on that in a second. Uh, but let's say the, the child needs A, B, and C. As long as they ain't breaking God's law, okay, I'm going to get it done. Next visit, they say, come back for a checkup, okay? My child is here. They're going to check the baby based upon what they told you previously. Read it again. Right. Agree with thine adversary quickly, for whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge. Now, ACS or whatever the term is, they say, you know what? You have not, you've been, I told you about hitting that child or not feeding it. We got the doctor. We're taking you to court. This is what it's saying. Uh, let, let's show, let's say any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, go ahead. And the judge to the officer. That's the court officer, go ahead. And thou be cast into prison. And you be cast into prison, go ahead. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. And believe me, they will put more, they'll give you time in jail like you was a, 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 su- a mass murderer. That's what they'll do. Be why? Because number one, they already know you follow these strange laws. So they, and you're black and Latinist, we already don't like them. Let's now put more charges on them. That's what they do. So in this life, you want to dot your I's and cross your T's. That's what you want to do. If, you're ch- if you say to your doctor, I don't believe in um, vaccinations and all that. You know what the doctor's going to do? They're going to check the health of the child. Once your child is malnutritioned or something, they're going to force that child to be vaccinated. Watch. You got this uh, underweight, sickly child. They are going to force your child to be vac- vaccinated because they're going to take the baby from you. You going into jail and they're going to vaccinate your kids. This is what they're doing. That same principle pertains to education as well. If right. your child don't measure up to certain quote unquote educational standards, they're saying that you're, you're neglecting to teach the child X, Y, and Z. Exactly. Right. Because, say, say for instance, if you don't. Let me use the flu shot. Say a lot of say if you, you you don't give your kid the flu shot, right? All right. Wouldn't you make sure you put in your kid diet where they got mm-hmm. iron and um vital a lot of vitamin C to fight off the flu? That's right. 
Wouldn't you do that? But some sisters, they just they just say, you know what? Eat I'm, this apple. Yeah, I'm not I'm the I'm not giving my kid the flu shot, but yet they don't they don't give the kid the right vitamins for the kid to fight off the flu. You know, so now if the kid get a, get sick, the kid could die because guess what? Esau put these things up like the flu shot and all of that because they be tampering with the food and all of that. Mm-hmm. You understand? So when they they be inventing flus and putting it out every season, yep. Yep. you know they be it probably being the same flu shot. You never know. You know, so when you get sick now. When the kid gets sick, the kid body can't fight off the flu. Why? Because if the kid don't have no vitamin C, and the kid have no iron in its body to fight off the flu. The, the kid immune system is low. Yeah. You understand? So if you brothers and sisters not putting your kids, not, not taking the flu shot, make sure your, your kid is, is have a high immune system. There you go. Because if the kid have a low immune system, you better give him that shot. <laughs> that's Esau going to use that against you. Yeah. That's what they do. Y'all okay. got to know your know your enemy, how they think. As an adult, because on my job, they get free f- flu shots. I say, I ain't taking that crap. Y'all trying to kill me. But I'm adult, an adult. Then they say, well, we want to give your children the flu vaccine. My children are healthy. They don't need it. I had to make sure. Me and my wife have to make sure they're eating right, they're, that they, they're not catching the flu. Because Esau looks for anything. Oh, right. the child is sick. Exactly. We're going to force it on them. That's what they do. And when you take them to the hospital, you you as a parent is the last one notified if they find something deficient. They would have called the hospital police and every damn thing else to surround that to surround the whole area. You don't even know what's happening. Then the next thing you know, only allow ACS to come in. That's what they tell us. And because Bishop, you said that um, you're an adult, so you can refuse it. The last medical facility that I was working in, they said if you refuse the flu shot. When the flu season comes in, you got to walk around the facility with a mask. Yeah, How many of you ever worked in a medical facility? So by law now, they're telling you, you got to wear a mask. And again, to what the bishop was saying about the child being sick, they now have, if the child comes frequently to the hospital, they can easily send someone to your house. Not because it's your fault, but they want to know what is the environment in your house that the child keeps getting sick. So they keep a record. They teach the doctors, and they teach, and they um, have a medical system in place that they'll see how often is this child coming to the hospital. And what they do is they make the people that your child is seeing accountable, so that if something happens to the child, those people will get charges brought upon them. Right. So you're not slick. A lot of time, Jake think that he's smart. Is the Israelites think that they can outsmart the system? And the Bible says that we must be subject to the powers that be. There's no other power but God. The I put them over us to create these conditions. And a lot of you think that you're gonna you're gonna bypass them. You're gonna work around them, and you're gonna do your own thing, and you're gonna make things up. And you're not going to be successful with that. Exactly. And not, not only do, you know when you go to the doctor, they ask you, what do you feed the child and all that? Yes. If ACS, is that the right company? Yeah. Corporate? Yeah. ACS, ACS, CPS, ACS, whatever. They will interview your child if the child can talk. What do you eat? What does mommy and daddy feed you? Do you eat chicken? No, I don't eat chicken. What do you eat? Potato chips. Now latest. Candy. What else? Ice cream. Soda pop, cupcakes, Skittles, really. And meanwhile, the parents are saying, I give my child vegetables, and I give them greens, and I give them this. Lie, and they look at lie, lie. That's what Esau do. They have, Esau is very thorough. Go to First Peter 2. So now we're getting into the portion. We're almost done. But we have to obey the powers that be. And when I say that, I'm not saying give your child vaccines, because we don't want to give our children vaccines if we can avoid it. Okay, but we got to do those things necessary to make sure our children are healthy if we're going to take that route. So that Esau has nothing against us. All right. Shalom, this I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC 
will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube channels. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets out. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.